Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to FTD Speaks. This is Leroy Kenton. And I've seen a lot more comments of people asking me to react to more and more and more Zakir Nayak videos. And I love to, I love watching his videos. I learned so much. And I came across a video that of course I haven't seen yet. It's Dr. Zakir Nayak, David Wood. His video was titled, David Wood does not have the caliber to debate Dr. Zakir. And if you know both of these men, Dr. Zakir Naik is very well educated. He's a medical doctor, as well as a doctor of philosophy. And also Dr. David Wood is a doctor of philosophy as well, but he's not a medical doctor, at least to my knowledge anyways. And I've seen both of their videos. They both are very well educated men, and they both firmly believe in their faith. So let's take a look and see what is said. I don't know if David Wood is going to appear in this video. I think it's just Dr. Zakir Naik talking about him though. So anyways, let's watch it together and then I'm going to share all my thoughts and comments at the end. The fourth question is from Sohag Ahmed. Sir, please debate with David Woods or say something to him as he says a lot of rubbish things about you and other Islamic scholars. Hmm. This person, Sohag Ahmed and few other Muslim brothers have been continuously asking this question. Few others? I'm sure it's a lot. Why is Dr. Zakir not debating with David Wood and Nand? They keep on asking the question several times. And I didn't think it was important, but now finally I've taken the question to give them the reason. Firstly, you have to understand that anyone that challenges a person, it's not required that you should accept the challenge. Hmm. As far as you realize, there are many non-Muslims who are becoming famous just by trying to criticize a popular person. Generally, it's a general rule, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, if he criticizes a popular personality or a celebrity, that person becomes famous. This is a common thing, it's nothing new. So because of that, David Woods is one of the Christians who has spoken against me and spoken against some of the other Muslim scholars and tries to challenge them why I have not accepted such challenges. The reason is that first of all, we should not give publicity to such people. That is the mm -hmm. reason I didn't want to answer this question. Then I thought of answering the question without taking the name of David Woods. If you go to David Woods YouTube, you find that he has spoken against me. Yeah. And those videos that made against me get views more than a million or close to a million. So we're giving him free publicity. Mm -hmm. There was a time when I was involved in the Dawa in my initial stages in the early 90s and the internet was new. In the mid 90s, the internet was new and when I went to America in the mid 90s, one of the first sites that was against Muslims was Answering Islam and the person who used to run this site was Joshin Katz. And that time we were new in the field of Dawah and when anyone wrote against Islam, I used to go out of the way and reply to them. Anyone wrote against me, I used to reply to them. And then I realized the moment we reply to them, we have another 10 counter questions. Mm -hmm. So what we realized that my positive work is being stopped. If really that question is a logical question or a question that deserves a reply should be replied. But these frivolous arguments, at that time, when I was new, I told Joshin Katz that, okay, do you want to debate with me? You're writing against Islam. He said, do you think I'm a fool to debate with Dr. Zakir Naik? That was his reply. <laughs> reply. So if you see in the initial stages of my dawa in the late 90s, in the early 2000s, I had many debates. And then I realized that debating is not the best. It should be done when required. But better is to talk about, give lectures on similarities between Islam and Christianity, similarities between Islam and Hinduism. But when required, yes. When and required, one of the yeah. best debaters in the world, you know, was Sheikh Ahmad Didar. <laughs> but then we realized that there were people who started challenging me. And one such person was from USA again. I'll tell you his name. Sam Shamoon. Sam Shamoon. And when I went to Chicago, I met him. He said, oh, I want to debate with you. I said, send your guru. And then I had a debate with his guru, Dr. William Campbell. And when I accepted this debate, I was called by the students of USA that Dr. William Campbell wrote a book, Quran and Bible in the Light of Science. And he took out about 30 scientific errors in the Quran. And for eight years, no Muslim replied. 
So this book was doing a great damage for the da'wah of the Muslims. And no one replied, so I took up the challenge. I read the book and I went and I debated with And Alhamdulillah, in Chicago, there were two groups among the Muslims. One group was against the debate. What is this? No one replied. And now this Zakir, who is this young man coming from India? How will he reply? So half the Muslims were against the debate and half the Muslims were for. Alhamdulillah, the debate took place in Chicago and Allah's help was there. Allah's mercy was there and it was a very successful debate. So much so that after that, Alhamdulillah, William Campbell who got a doctorate in writing a book against Islam, MashaAllah, it lost its popularity. Later on then, I made a policy that after my video started becoming popular, then I had a rule. I will only debate with those people who are popular. Then mm -hmm. we realized that those people who are not popular started challenging to become popular. And I'll give you a very good example. You know Sheikh Ahmed Didat, he debated with Jimmy Swaggart. Yeah. And Jimmy Swaggart that time was one of the most popular televangelists. He was yeah. multiple times more popular than Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Many people told him, don't go, he will chew you and spit you. But Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Ahmed Didat had the help of Allah and he gave a knockout to Jimmy Swaggart. We have another example, he debated with Anis Surosh. Anis Surosh wasn't known at all. But when Anis Surosh <laughs> debated with Sheikh Ahmed Didat, Ahmed Didat, Alhamdulillah, won him lock, stock and barrel, but Anis Surosh became popular. Right. So what we realize that when you debate with someone who's popular and an unpopular person debates with a popular person, the unpopular person becomes, becomes popular. Over. So why yeah. should we make the unpopular Christian missionaries as popular? So then I had a policy that anyone who wants to debate with me should minimum have at least 2% of the audience that I have in my largest gathering. And earlier I said that Anyone who can gather 10,000 people, individuals for a lecture, I will debate him. I think even 20,000. After that, there was a middle person who requested him to debate with Shishi Ravi Shankar. And you know, Shishi Ravi Shankar is one of the most famous Hindu preachers in the world. One of the most. It comes in number one, two, and three. And he has a large following. He has a audience of 20,000, 50,000, alhamdulillah. I accepted the challenge. And we had a debate in the year 2006, in January, in his hometown, Bangalore. And Allah's help was there, it was a very successful debate. The topic was concept of God in Hinduism and Islam in the light of sacred scriptures. Mm -hmm. Since 2006, there are many people who challenge me for a debate. And when anyone challenges me, I say that I don't waste my time. Mm. There are hundreds of people who address large audiences. They're very popular. And my largest gathering that I've given a lecture Two million, is I think. previously was in Kerala. Then it was in Kishan Ganj, Bihar, where mm -hmm. more than a million people attended. More than a million. Okay. So 2% yeah. of a million is 20,000. So my criteria was I would not mind debating any non-Muslim on any topic of comparative religion as long as he can gather minimum 20,000 people for his live lecture, not a conference. In conferences, there are 20, 30 speakers. They might not have come for him particularly. So if a person gives a solo lecture and if he can get audience of 20,000 people live, not on the YouTube, not on the Facebook, 20,000 live sitting, then I don't mind debating him. And what I'm asking is not something which is difficult. There are hundreds of Hindu preachers in India who have audience in more than 20,000. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of Christian missionaries who have audiences more than 20,000. Yeah. So I tell if people like Sam Shamoon or people like David Woods want to have a debate, let them become popular. Why do they want to ride on my bandwagon? Mm -hmm. And if you can't get that gathering, only thing you have to do is convince with your material. Any other Christian preacher, there are many. Franklin Graham is there, Billy Graham is there, Morris Sorolo is there. There are many, there are hundred speakers that I know in Christianity who have given live lectures to more than 20,000 people. What you have to do is catch one of them and convince them that your material against me is logical and give it to them. I will have a debate with them. Why should I make you famous overnight? Hmm. I heard one or two of his videos that Zakir Naik is a joke. It is. What he's talking is rubbish. 
But the moment I reply to him, he becomes famous. That's the reason I was avoiding handling this question because now the moment I take the name of David Woods, most of the people yeah, hearing me him. tonight may not be aware of David Woods. A small percentage maybe. They will go and check. He will become famous. And let me tell you, there are many other people. There was a dai by the name of Muhammad Hijab. Yeah. And Hijab. he came to meet me in Malaysia last year. And he's a fan of mine. He's a good dai. He personally had a debate with David Woods. Yeah. I have not seen the video. I was supposed to watch. But some I of my colleagues saw it. And they told that Brother Muhammad Hijab, he gave David Woods a knockout. <laughs> um, so when others I can do the that. job, why should I waste my time? That's the reason previously we used to reply on the internet. Now we don't. Because the moment you reply, they'll give a counter reply and your work of positive dawa suffers. So that's the reason anyone who wants to debate me, this criteria is there. Give it to a celebrity, give it to a famous personality, he will not be a fool to debate with me. Today, if someone gives a million dollars to Shishi Ravi Shankar, he will never agree to have a debate with me again. He knows that. Even if you give two million dollars to him, he will not. Because he's a celebrity. He will lose his following. And he already lost many, many people in that debate who were his followers who called him God. They accepted Islam. So that's the reason I require David Wood to convince any of these hundred Christian missionaries who are popular, who can have audience of more than 20, so convince them. If he cannot convince them, why does he want to have a debate with him? When he cannot convince his own Christian brother that the material of his is enough to answer my lectures, why is he wasting his time? These people are only riding on the popularity of other people. Otherwise, he is unknown. And I request the Muslim brothers, please don't waste your time. Hmm. Please don't waste your time. The person who asked me this question should have, in fact, known that Brother Muhammad Hijab, he had a debate with him and I already answered him. So why should you make David Wood popular? So hope this answers the question. And because I met this criteria since 2006, in the last 14 years, no one has ever wanted to debate me. One of the fans of Sadhguru told me, will you debate Sadhguru? And Sadhguru is a popular person, is not as popular as Shishi Ravi Shankar, but he's popular. I told, okay, I accept it, I know he's popular. Okay, if he wants to debate with me, I'm not interested in debating him. He wants to debate, he wants to speak against Islam, wants to challenge me, I'll accept it. Because if he challenges me and if Allah's help is there and we present the truth and answer to all his illogical arguments, but naturally, he will lose his following. So if people like Sadhguru or someone who's popular want to challenge on any topic of Islam and comparative religion, which I deal with, I accept the challenge. Hope that answers the question. We just saw a very comprehensive reaction from Dr. Zakir Nayak as to why he doesn't even want to debate David Wood. David Wood to him is uh, nobody. And although, yes, David Wood has some popularity right now, he is growing. He's debated people like um, Mohammed Hijab, which I've mentioned that I've seen the, the, the debate. Uh, it was pretty evenly matched up. Both of them did have some uh, good points. I think they both still uh, stood on their uh, two feet. But um, Dr. Zakir Naik is saying, it's why would I waste my time? People like David Wood is trying to just uh, ride the bandwagon of people who are popular and Zagir Naik, he, he's been doing this for a long time since what the early mid 90s he's been ch debating and everybody he would reply and reply and debate 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 and then he just he's stopped because he's like oh wow when I debate or when people who are not popular they debate somehow they get popular overnight so like why am I gonna make somebody else popular so he started setting criteria in place saying that you got to be popular already at least have a solid following or at least be able to have material that can challenge and answer his own material and then give that to somebody a christian or hindu whoever jewish scholar who is more popular or personality doesn't have to be a scholar but somebody who's more popular and use it and then he said yeah He'll, he'll accept the uh, debate. Um, but currently right now, Dr. Zakir Naik is not going around and looking for people to debate. He knows, and he said even in this video, he knows he's one of the best debaters in the world. And that's the thing with uh, debates though. 
Debate is one style of conversation and it's not the only way to do it. It does take a long time uh, and it's it's a different format. It's it, like it's it's a format. Sure, have a conversation, yeah, but debating is one thing and usually there's like a, a winner and a, a loser when it comes to the debate. It's not like, you know, they're keeping score or anything like that, but the audience can generally decide, wow, this person presented a stronger argument than this person. So maybe let me go follow this person instead. And so people lose their following. So it makes a lot of sense. I I totally understand where he's coming from. He He's probably a busy guy. I'm sure he gets hundreds of thousands of emails and comments every single year. And it's just a lot for him to answer every single um, person. But I was really, really, really surprised that he made this video about David Wood. And I've seen some of David Wood's videos and yes, Muslims would definitely find some of those videos very offensive. He speaks uh, very firmly on certain teachings of Prophet Muhammad. And David Wood has said in his own words, he said he doesn't insult Islam. He insults some of the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. And he says one of the reasons why he does this is because insults are also allowed in the religion of Islam. You can insult someone else's belief. And he's even stated examples of um, uh, one of the Prophet's companions that made fun of um, a polytheist in one of the hadiths. But I'm not gonna lie though, even after hearing Dr. Zakir Naik speak, and even after I'm talking here now, honestly, I think it'd be a pretty good debate. Zakir Naik and David Wood. David Wood, he is, I think he needs to brush up a little bit more on his debating skills. Because again, when it comes to debate, it's almost like a boxing match. Someone punches you, you gotta punch back twice as hard. You gotta be able to deliver firm information. But like, even if your information is more correct, if you don't deliver it in a certain way, that's not debate style and it's not gonna be as compelling to the audience listening. But yeah, maybe he'll get popular more over time and <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I think it would be a good debate. We'll learn a lot. Um, normally when I watch debates, by the way, I just watch literally to learn information. I, I normally don't pick sides because I think that uh, once I pick a side, then I'm gonna tune out the other side. I already have a winner in mind, so I lose out on a lot of valuable information from both sides. So that's my approach to debates anyways. Either way, guys, I wanna hear what you have to say. Would you wanna see a debate between David Wood and Dr. Zakir Nayak? Sound off down below in the comment section. What do you think that's gonna be a total knockout? Zakir Nayak will just wipe the floor with David Wood. I don't know what you think about any of this down below. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, and also if this is your first time here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified every time I post a new video. Okay, enough chit chat from me guys. I'll see you in the next one, later.